Christ. Wait, we're on. Yeah, no, no, I know we're on. Hey, world, why don't you stop the feedback? No, Pranav. Jesus Christ. <laughs> <laughs> no for <problem. laughs> Should we just delete that and start over again or should we No, you should, I mean we, we could is no, Let's keep going. All right. Are we to keep going? <laughs> We're trying to do a podcast everyone. Ben, you're supposed to introduce the I, I I think podcast is um, or whatever, a live stream formal. Facebook thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that's a great entry. Okay. If you are Sorry, sorry if you're watching this. Um, this is our first attempt at doing a live stream. Um, yeah. We receive a lot of questions both inside and outside the program and um, you know regarding cannabis startups, startups in general, investing. Um, and we thought, why not just get on the air once a week and field some of these questions, give our thoughts and you know you guys can do with it what you will. Um, we're a little bit opinionated on some topics. Never. Uh, <laughs> but we'll try to keep it, uh, what, 30 minutes? Yeah, it'll be short. And we sorry about the audio. Uh, yeah, we have an occasional train that pass, will, passes we'll, by. Yeah, we'll fix the, train. the audio. If this actually works, we'll get better equipment. Although I'm kind of excited. This is kind of like my childhood dream to be like the host of like TRL. Place. Like, can we oh, look get some fans over on the sidewalk? <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, so what are our questions? I know I'm out of, I'm off, probably not in camera. Oh, I'm blocking one camera, but that's okay. Here, I'll, I'll try okay. not to spill one. So we didn't get a chance to go out and um, collect a lot of questions uh, this past week uh, because we just came up with this concept um, in the last couple of days. So we asked some of the people in the cohort, um, you know, what are some questions that we could address in our talk today? And we got a few that came in. Uh, so we'll just get started and see where the conversation takes us. Sure, and the train will Eventually, pass. Chime in once in a while. Yeah. Um, if you have any questions that pop up, feel free to put them into the feed. And if we don't address them here, we'll review them and maybe get to them next week, and we'll give you a little shout out. Uh, but first, this is a good question. Um, I didn't actually review the question, so I. Okay. No, no, I'm I'm just gonna fire them at you. I, oh, great. Reading. So, um, first question: When do you make your first hire? And this comes from Marshall. Um, <laughs> <in that> program. <sighs> Well, I mean, I think the, my opinion on that would depend on what you mean by your first hire, right? Sure. Uh, the extent that you can get people to work for you for free, you do it right away. Um, to the extent that you have to, you know, pay money. I mean, I like, I'm of the mindset that the founder should be doing basically everything that they possibly can, can do on their own sure. um, until they're so overwhelmed that... Uh, they absolutely need to make a hire somewhere, and it would really push their business forward. So yeah, um, really, because really, it's I mean, it's like a learning opportunity, right? Like you don't really know how to manage something unless you've actually and you don't know how to yourself. you don't know how to evaluate your first hire in any particular area unless you've done that job for yourself a little mm -hmm. bit. So I mean, there's a, there's some exceptions like don't be your own lawyer, right? Um, sure. There you're not hiring a, a full time lawyer anyway. So um, you know, for example. You don't go out and hire a social media marketing person off the bat because uh, you don't. You might not really understand what you need to do and what you don't need to do and what's working and what's not and what that entails. So it's going to be hard for you to judge whether that person is the right hire in the first place. Right. Um, I'm not a fan of outsourcing code. Um, generally, I don't know a lot of people are. I think you can do it, but you need to have a technical person who is with you preferably you, uh, who, who's in charge of the code and then maybe outsource pieces of it. But I don't like when products are, you know, you've got a non-technical founder and they're like, oh, I, I someone in the Ukraine wrote all my code. Um, sure. So, uh, you know, I would say you make your first hire when you absolutely have to um, and you put it off for as long as possible. Yeah, I, I like that, the absolutely have to part, um, you know, like, the way I typically look at it is like, what is causing the biggest pain in my day, right? Like, what what could I be doing that is like the highest value of my time, yeah. and what do I need to remove and can like offload onto someone else? Now, do you think I think what we're saying is probably only applicable to like pre-funded sure. startups? Once you get, you know, if you raise Series A, you're you're making hires because they're strategic and will help you grow quickly or, yeah. or whatever. So, but but early on, your very first hire. 
let's just, we're assuming you don't have any money, mm-hmm. right? Well, and actually that comes up a lot, especially right now in the program, you know, as, as companies are starting to prepare their pitch decks and start talking about the money that they're going to need, you know, at the, at, at the very end of the deck, it's always the ask, like, I, w- I need $2 million. Like, what do you need that $2 million for? Um, and like, what is the staff that you're going to hire with that two million, and what is that going to get you? Right. And it's not necessarily what you're going to have them working on, but what are they going to be trying to accomplish in the next eighteen months? Right. Um, I think a lot of founders, especially first-time founders, are very. Um, they've got a vision for how they want everything to be, mm-hmm. right? And they, they just kind of want to hire people to do all of their their vision rather than thinking of it in terms of milestones and what's, what are the minimum sets of things that I need to do to prove the viability of this business and to prove that I can grow it um, and kind of hire along that trajectory, which generally is a slower hire earlier on. And then once it's kind of proven and you've raised some capital, then it becomes more of a strategic, okay, now we're hiring to, to blow this out you know, sure. and complete my vision. So. I cheated a little bit. This is actually a two-part question. Oh, okay. And so we're talking about capital, but offsetting capital. Yes. Um, a lot of people ask, you know, how much equity do I give away? And again, this is highly dependent on what stage of business you're in. If you're, you know, if you're talking about your founding team, is it a co-founder? <laughs> we were just talking right, yeah. about this yesterday. Um, and then, you know, like take that a step further when you're making those the, those big hiring pushes. Like, you know, how do you divide up the equity, and how do you make sure there's enough? Yeah, I mean, I think that's a great question. Um, Maybe we break it down in two parts. We could spend like five minutes just talking about the the first, you know, the early stages and then maybe talk about when you are bringing on that first million dollars. Yeah, I mean, I think in general, so first of all, everyone should be vesting, right? The standard six-month cliff for your vest is um, pretty standard in Silicon Valley, right? Um, Co-founders are a little bit different, although they should also vest, Mm -hmm. uh, as you know. Yes. Co-founders don't even actually last so all the time. Sometimes there's a some disruption in a co-founder team, so um, you want your co-founders vesting. Because of vesting, I'm I'm of the mindset that you should be relatively generous with equity, uh, and but but relatively ruthless with firing people. Sure. So um, you know you you give them enough equity that if they're the rock star that you want them to be. Uh, you're both happy with that in the future. Yeah, and that's then super when, important. Being 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 happy with it, right? It's like right. you're you're building a relationship really early on, and if if your expectations as two parties are vastly different, right. no one's ever probably going to be happy with the situation. Right, and and if so, if you're let's take an example. Let's say you've got a you need a certain technical person to come lead a team and, and have, play a really key role, and you want to give them five percent, right? Um, well. If they're going to be happy with five percent, and you're going to be happy with having given them five percent, if they meet all of the expectations that you both have, then you grant them that uh, under the the assumption of success, right? But then what you have to do is you have to very carefully pay attention to whether they're meeting your expectations, and as soon as you realize they're not, you need to get rid of them. And the nice thing about vesting is you haven't lost that five percent if mm-hmm. if you. If you terminate them before six months, you haven't lost anything. Uh, and if you terminate them after that, um, you know, you've lost some, but not that whole 5%. And so that goes back into the equity pool. So I'm a fan of being relatively generous um, with vesting, mm-hmm. uh, provided that you're also ruthless. Right. Um, and we, we both know Adeo Resi from the Founder Institute has a, uh, his, his motto is, you know, when do you fire someone? As soon as you start thinking about if you should, right? right. Like, as soon as you ask the question to yourself, <laughs> as soon as like, you ask the I wonder if I should fire this person. That means fire them. Um, so pretty uh, ruthless. <laughs> it is pretty ruthless, but you know it's really hard to work for a startup. It's hard to it's hard to found, and it's really hard to be a startup employee. And anyone who's ever done it knows that it's a it's a different type of person, and not everyone's cut out for it. Um, it has its advantages and disadvantages. So um, some people are just better employees, and some people are. You know, at big corporations, and some people are better at startups. And okay. you know, I'm a crappy employee at a big corporation, so <laughs> yeah, that's uh, not my own, obviously. Yeah, so um, well, let's spin off that a little bit because the next question um, from our director of community um, is the culture of startups. Like, uh, I mean, just every that's really. I mean, so the, in specific, it was it's like, how do you build the right type of culture in a startup? Um, and for me, I'm like, what does that exactly mean? We're talking about being ruthless. That could be a pretty intense atmosphere um 
but I'm also one that believes heavily in like having a positive culture and you know just inspiring people the right way to do the right yeah. type of work and it's 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 a constant battle on the startup but I mean I feel like um, I feel like building a culture in a startup you're constrained by the fact that it's going to have to be a startup culture it's gonna have to have components of startup culture in it so like you can't I don't think you you're doing yourself a favor by saying, well, I don't want the ruthless part and the hard work of a startup. That's not the culture I want. Well, you probably shouldn't do a startup. Right? <laughs> Too bad. <laughs> right. So there's, there's, there's part of the culture that's kind of determined by the fact that you're a startup. Right. Um, but then beyond that, you have a lot of control. And uh, you and I are both on the same page on this, the importance of really focusing on culture. We have, wait, I'll go get it. Hold on. I know that I'm not supposed to do this on camera. But, uh, uh, are you walking right towards the camera? Well, I don't know where, I don't know what. Nice. Yeah, yeah. So like we have, uh, you know, we put together this, I'll, I'll, this is more of an internal document. So I'll like not share the whole thing with the world, but um, we have a very, uh, formalized way that we expect companies to build something that we call the brand foundation. And so we have, you know, we go through, you probably can't read this, I don't know, but we'll, we'll see. Uh, you know, you define your purpose, your goals, your habits, your company values, the promise to your customers and your persona. All this stuff kind of drives, uh, this is the foundation of your culture as well as just the foundation of your company, right? right. And so um, when you're picking your values, for example, Living at Evernote recommends that you only pick one, mm -hmm. right? We like to have you know three or four, but one primary value. Yeah. And so, you know, those values should be something that you really use when you hire, and um, you know, when, when you're hiring someone, you should show them your brand foundation and say, like, look, this is what you're getting into, right? This is this is yeah. what we believe. This is what it's like. Um, and I think culture is super important. I mean, the only way you re end up building culture is not through documents like this. Right. It's through actually who you hire and who you don't hire right and hiring for culture is super important um so so yeah i mean the 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 startup culture you know the hard work the the intense nature of it um it kind of predicates that or in, in my eyes at least that there's a there's a few values that kind of stand out as ways to counterbalance those and really kind of make sure that everyone's sure. consistently on the same page so you know we often um you know, gravitate towards authenticity. Right, which right. is kind of cliche now, but it does have a real meaning and sure. we like it, so yeah. I, I sometimes use transparency, but then we got into an argument about like, is transparency always good? Right. Um, but like, I think I believe that authenticity as like, you know, a primary value is, is, is super important. Um, at least yeah. what we do, right? Sure, I mean, but if you're building like Evernote, for example, trust was their prim primary value and that was very important then. Um, uh, you know, Phil was the one that argued that transparency isn't always good, right? Because yes. uh, it doesn't always build trust. Sure. Um, so I, I, I encourage, I, I would encourage founders to have values that resonate with them personally and that uh, yeah, they want to surround themselves with people who those values resonate with them too. Mm -hmm. um, but then there's things that are just good ideas like honesty, right? right. Authenticity, those are, those are super important. Um, you know, never hire someone who is, you know, just because of their skill set or they're really good at something, but they're not a cultural fit. Or, you know, you don't hire, an, you don't hire someone who's an asshole unless that's part of your <laughs> culture of assholes, sure. right? Um, so, uh, yeah, I mean, I, I think it's super important. Um, okay. I don't, I don't know if you have anything else to add. I'm trying to look if there's like, no, I mean, it's, it's, it's just one of those, one of those things that, you know, like, we we've both worked in numerous startups over the last you know decade. Yeah. And there's certain things that just stand that stand out. And actually, what what I usually gravitate towards is like, you know, relationship books. It's like everything that you read in a relationship book, you know, pertains to what your biz like how your business operates. Like. Yeah. Like clearly, like communication, right? Like everyone's always talking about communication and relationships. Like if you have a, like a very healthy line of communication in your in your startup and you are able to be approachable yet still be respected, it's you know that that's the best way you're going to lead because then you're going to be able to see things coming right. down the line and, and address problems before they really. Yeah, get. absolutely. And we're not, you know, I've certainly failed at communication before in the startup, and and it's had its had negative consequences. Um, communication is one of those things that also is a little bit cliche, but no one actually does it. Like people talk about it, but no one actually communicates 
sincerely. Yeah. yeah. Um, so, I mean, and some of it is kind of relationship e, right? It's yeah. uh, how you're feeling about things matters sometimes. Right? So, so, like, so this actually reminds just, me of one of the yeah, the, the bit, current right? Founder Institute class uh, companies. Yeah. Right. The, yeah. The, the 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 hardware device that syncs itself with um <laughs> I, just don't, I don't even know if wait, we're allowed what, to talk about this on here <laughs> actually uh, but uh, anyway wait, so wait just gonna, give me a founder name who are you talking about I, I don't remember the name from Adeo's class yeah. right now oh Grace no it was a gentleman that was working with the egg shaped device that syncs itself with a oh that thing yeah yeah no uh I don't I don't, don't but know I'll, I'll, okay is. let me cut yes, cut yes, to the yes, chase yes. essentially what it is is the the man and the woman are having a hard time communicating, so you need a device to like communicate for you. Right, and she, like she's my, it's like a mood ring. Here right. are my feelings. Here are my feelings. Yeah, yeah exactly. Um, <laughs> yeah, you know, I mean, we're big fans of therapy for founders generally, and and working on that stuff. But um, I don't but, know, I mean, yeah. culture is super important, right? And and uh, you gotta hire for culture, and you gotta be ruthless about you know bringing the people that are good cultural fits into your startup because. Uh, it's kind of like a little family, and if there's a bad fit, it doesn't go well. True that. All right. Let's move on to the last one. Okay. How are we doing on time? All right, yeah. Uh, we probably plenty doing of Doing pretty good. Probably, yeah. Um, actually, we eat up time pretty well. I don't did know we if really? you noticed that. When did um, we start? What time did we start? I don't know, like 10 after? Probably. Oh, okay. Two and a half hours late. Um. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, about then. <laughs> All right. Last one. This one's a little tongue-in-cheek, but I think it, like, gets at something very important, um, just kind of high level startup culture wise. Um, I'll let you guess uh, what one of our founders said this. Um, when exactly will I become rich and famous? Oh God. <laughs> yeah, no, I know who said it. Um, <laughs> in fact, I think I mentioned him at the beginning of this show. Okay. Because <laughs> uh, he was walking by and he's uh, ready to annoy us. Um, <laughs> That's funny. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, well, so the thing that you and I say, which I think we kind of stole from Adeo, or at least part of it from Adeo, but uh, yeah. whatever, um, you know, you don't start a company to become rich and famous, you're more likely to get divorced and go bankrupt. So, uh, yeah, sorry if that's ringing true for some people in the audience. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's very real, though. I mean, it's super real. I mean, it, it, we kind of say it as a joke, but it's sad. Um, it's, that's actually true uh, in many cases. Um, you, you shouldn't be starting a f company in order to get rich and famous. Right. Um, because, I mean, those are the wrong motivations to be dedicated. You're just not going to be able to stick with it. There's going to be days when you everything's going horribly. You don't want to get out of bed uh, because it's just like the world is crashing down around you. And the motivation of like, I'm going to be rich and famous someday just doesn't cut it. Sure. Right. Um, it's not going to because then you'll start thinking of other ways to become rich and famous. Exactly, and you'll you know you won't have perseverance uh, yeah. to do it. In fact, we've recently seen a founder who got into their business because they thought it was a way to make quick money, and they ended up not even staying with the company uh, for uh, maybe they stayed for a year. I don't know how long they were there, but not long, and they ended up disrupting this founder team because uh, they had this stupid notion that great guy but stupid notion that like oh i'm just gonna this is a great way to make some money yeah um and that's never the case so yeah that's a bad reason to get in if you're asking the question um honestly that's a problem i hope he was saying it tongue-in-cheek a little bit i'm pretty fairly sure. certain yeah because i know <laughs> he, him and i know why he's in the business and it's not that he knows better um so. but uh but yeah that's a horrible horrible reason and you probably will never become rich and famous so yeah. yeah, chances are, I mean, statistically speaking, chances are that you won't, right? Look, even I if mean, you become rich, you're not likely to become famous. I mean, I've we both have several friends who've made hundreds of millions of dollars that you don't know their names. Sure. Right? Like, they're not famous. They yeah. had a great company. They sold it. They're happy. They, they, they did get rich, but... You could create, like, a live Facebook podcast and, like, become famous right. that way. So right? we're obviously famous already. Obviously. Because we're on Facebook. Totally. And like someday, maybe we'll have people lining up on the sidewalk right. across the street. There was a FedEx truck parked right out there earlier, which made me think, hey, that's great product placement. You know, that should be like, yes. we should charge, we should for charge FedEx for that. Yes. For sure. and, and Dope Magazine and MGG, you're, yeah. getting, you're getting some free advertising. And Expo, we, we use Expo a lot. Yeah, um, 
just like right all over the world. Yeah, because I mean, there's like three or four people that are, will see this. Right. Totally. Yeah. All right. Well, to those three or four Wait, people. Wait, do you have anything else? That was it? I wanted to keep it short because I'm. Hey, it's lunchtime now yeah, and I'm fair, hungry. Okay. Um, and I think we have a lot of calls. Can we encourage people though to like set us, send us your your questions and stuff? Um, yeah. Would prefer that they're cannabis startup stuff, but general startup stuff as well. I mean, we both advise tech companies and um, and stuff. So uh, yeah, questions on investing, cannabis, gateway. Um, yeah. You can find us on the Twitter and Instagrams over here at GTWI Inc. Is that visible? Can you... I, I think so. I don't know. It's on the whiteboard. <laughs> and then we have uh, the hashtag gateway OH um, if you want us to find your questions. Yep. So. I actually don't know which camera to look at. It's kind of weird. And this is the third member of the podcast, our lovely train. Actually, the third member is over there. Oh. She's Hi, Alicia. between cameras. Thank you. Uh, this is the fourth <laughs> member of the train. The fourth member is more like a bully. But, yeah. Still not used to it. Okay. Yeah. Let's wrap it up because okay. I don't want to just jibber jabber forever. Alright, yeah, that's fine. Alright, see everyone next week. See you possibly in the future sometime. <laughs>